Welcome back Treasure Divers and just want to give you an update on the dive boat. Um, we now know it was called a man overboard boat which is quite interesting. It served in the North Sea on the oil rig platforms. Um, we're just doing some modifications to it so we're changing the seating. It, was, it used to seat six people sitting on two benches uh, but we've rather have the area for um, kitting up so flat area is the most important for you have to excuse the noise but it's Saturday morning and everyone wants to cut their grass um, or do whatever they're doing over there right so uh, I'm in the process of removing these seats uh, like I say to give us more room because divers can sit on the sides they don't need seating like that we don't need it all posh so, in fact, divers prefer to sit on the sides like that. So, and then I will have all this area here for kitting up. But these, these seats are becoming, uh, proving to be a little bit more difficult than I first thought to get out, because uh, they're laminated in. Uh, I'm trying to get them out without compromising the floor. So, uh, while we're on the subject, I just want to show you this. If you're ever in the market for a new boat, always ask them what, what it's constructed of. Obviously it's GRP, and they'll come out of all kinds of specifications on the GRP and the resins and everything, and how it's all, how it's all Lloyd's um, of London certified, and all that kind of baloney. But if they admit to using plywood in their structure of boat walk away and don't listen to what they say when they say oh well plywood's all right because it's encapsulated um, in resin so it's as good as steel that's rubbish because as soon as you put a screw or well basically a screw um, for any kind of fitting or fixing through your ply which is encapsulated, it then is compromised and the water will get in and then it will blow up. We're looking here at a piece of plywood which I've just removed from the uh, flooring area and as you can see it was encapsulated because you can still see the fiberglass that it was that was around it and it is completely sodden. Now it may surprise you to know that manufacturers still building boats with plywood in them they particularly use it for the stringers and the, basically the stringers are the main backbone of your hull they're underneath you can't see them but they're underneath the deck and they basically look at the water dripping out of that look look at that That is absolutely soaked, saturated through. Never buy a boat that uses plywood. There's so many alternatives now on the market, but they are more expensive. These foams that you can buy now in sheets that they should be making these boats with. Uh, and that's, that's really the only thing you can use now. You just can't, the days of using plywood in new boats is, is over. That's my opinion anyway. So you can see those two uh, screw topped compartments I put in the sides there. That was just to give me access to the bolts on those plates so I could put bolts on. Uh, uh, this ladder, I could probably already mention. This ladder is actually really good for like things like this. When you're doing work in the boat, you can put the ladder down and it's really good for getting in and out of the boat, but it's actually the bad, worst thing possible for diving, I've decided. I haven't tried it yet, but it's just so heavy. Anyway, uh, this seat here that we're looking at, this is going to come out as well. Um, and then once we've got rid of all the internal seats, I shall make a nice seat which will have a gap underneath it and it'll incorporate the fuel tank and the emergency paddles 
and a few other bits and pieces and it'll be replacing that, that seat there. That's all you need is one seat just for the driver so he can operate the tiller control and the other guys can sit around the edge and all the gear can be in the middle. There's plenty of room then for getting kitted up. Anyway that's the plan. Oh and another thing of course, once I've uh, tidied all this floor up because they obviously laminated up the sides of these seats so there's thick ridges down both sides so all that's got to be ground out probably then I'll probably have to patch it then with some fiberglass put some uh, a couple of 450 lengths of 450 mat over it patches and uh, sand the whole lot down and then what I think I'm gonna do is then repaint the whole deck with a nice anti-slip um, paint that's the idea anyway hey oh dear how many people have done that before I've just done a about a minute and a half piece to camera and realized it wasn't even switched on there you go anyway uh, so I'll say it again <laughs> this is another reason why I'm getting rid of these bench seats look at all this water so I start cutting into it and all this water comes out look all that is just sitting in there and it and this is what was on the bottom of the one that I've taken out it's all mud and sh crappy water and dirt and sand it's all stuff that gets stuck in places I hate that I just want to be able to stand at one end with a pressure washer and just rinse it out the whole thing all the way down straight out of the elephant trunks at the end and then it's job's done there, it's all clean and it's all the salt's gone, all the sand's gone, it's all clean, ready for the next trip. It's all about low maintenance this boat, that's what it's going to be all about. That's why we've got an, in, uh, an outboard that's tiller control, doesn't need a battery, it's pull start. That's why we've got a manual bilge pump there, we don't need any power, any batteries. I am going to put some navigation lights on, but they too will be battery operated. So just little, you know, literally little pen light batteries um, which will last for donkeys. And we can just carry some spares anyway. But it's unlikely we're ever going to be out in the dark in it, so anyway, that's for the future. And we've got we've got a radio and that's obviously a handheld one as well. So we don't need a battery on this thing. We don't need anything. It's gonna to be totally low maintenance, so we can just hitch up to the van and go. Not have to think about, you know, oh, is the battery charged? Is this sorted? Is that sorted? So that's the plan. Stick with us. So here we go, we've finally got the other seat out and this is what I mean about being able to just wash the whole thing out all the way down. It's the first time that water's been able to run down there from the top to the bottom and escape out of the elephant trunk. Okay, right. So this is it. It's um, all emptied. It's harder than it looks. So you can see obviously where those two seats were. And uh, obviously that's going to be an issue. I've tidied them up, but they've still got to be ground down where, they, where the edges are. Uh, but this was the general idea that I was after, it was a nice straight through deck and uh, just wash everything out the end. So what we've got to do now is make a seat for here and that'll be made out of steel and powder coated and uh, that'll go here but it'll be off the ground with feet so that the, uh, the water just washes underneath and it'll also incorporate the fuel tank the emergency paddles and a few other bits and pieces. So that'll be all nice and tidy and out of the way. It's 
been lashing down with rain all day, so it's just stopped raining. But I've been uh, been doing it in the rain, so I'm pretty wet now, so I'm going to go inside. Thanks for watching.